Hello friends, welcome to my YouTube channel. Thank you for subscribing my channel. In this series of Snowflake certification, today we are going to discuss about the storage concepts in Snowflake. So the smallest unit in Snowflake is the micro partitions. The data is stored in Snowflake in micro partitions. How it is stored, we will go into see it. Then we will discuss about the column metadata clustering. What information in the metadata is stored related to the columns and how this can be helpful in the clustering. Third, we are going to discuss about the monitoring of our data storage. And the last, the sub search optimization services of the Snowflake. So what is micro partition? Actually, all data in Snowflake tables is automatically divided into micro partitions, which are continuous units of storage. So each micro partition contains the data between 50 MB and 500 MB uncompressed. Okay, this is the main point. 500 MB and uh, 50 MB and 500 MB uncompressed data. Okay, but in actual Snowflake, it is stored always the data is stored in the compressed manner. So it will be less than that always. Okay. So Snowflake stores metadata about all rows stored in a micro partition. Okay. So what all metadata information it keeps? It keeps the range of values for each of the columns in the micro partition. The number of distinct values in that column and additional properties which can be used for the optimization and efficient query processing. Okay. Come and let's see how the data is stored in a micro partitions. So for example, this is our table. Okay, the data logical structure of the data is suppose there is a four columns in the table type, name, country and date and it has 24 columns in uh, rows in it. Okay, each micro partitions the data is stored in a columnar format. So you can see the type column data stored together then the name data then country and date. Okay. This is how the data is stored in a micro partitions. Okay. So from one to six rows in one partition and so on. This is not the exact representation that this is the uh, kind of giving you the glimpse how the data is stored in a micro partitions. Okay. What is the benefit of it? Okay. So as we know, the data is stored in a columnar format, right? So it will help the query optimization technique or the uh, the metadata layer, the cloud services layer to identify which all micro partition it needs to read to give the output of that particular uh, query. Okay. For example, if we select, we need the value from this table where the type equal to two. Okay. So the type equal to two, where it is all contained. So with which all micro partition contain the type equal to two. So here we can see in all the micro partitions, the two is contained. Okay. So in that query, all the micro partitions will be read. Okay. But for example, if uh, there is a query, for example, um, we need to just select the data for the name equal to A. Okay. In that case, we can see the A is available here in this part micro partition and this micro partition, but we do not have this A available here. Okay. So this is called the, uh, the uh, pruning of micro partitions. So out of four micro partitions, which, which is storing this whole table data, we just need to scan the three partitions. Okay. And this information is contained in the metadata layer. Okay. So this is how the, the physical structure of micro, uh, micro partitions looks into the, into the cloud storage layer. Okay. There is another concept called, uh, the depth of clustering. Okay, what it means? Suppose for one column, if we have values from A to Z, the distinct values, okay, and those are stored in, for example, it's in a five micro partitions, the depth of that column will be 
five. Okay, because it has five overlapping micro partitions. But if those partitions are divided in such a manner, like from A to D, the values are stored in this one. From E to J, stored in another micro partition, and there is three overlapping micro partitions which contains the value for K to Z. Okay, in this case, the depth is three. Okay, the clustering depth is three. So, what is the best case in this one? Okay, where the there is no overlapping micro partition and over uh, overall depth is one. In that case, what will happen? Suppose if the query is want to process the data, where the filter condition to pick the data from between T to Z. In that case, remaining four pa micro partition will be eliminated at the metadata layer itself, and only one micro partitions will be read. So this is how Snowflake returns the data quickly if the overall depth is only one. In that case, there are like very less overlapping micro partitions. Okay. And this is how the the clustering works in the uh, uh, as a part of that optimization technique. Okay, where you need to define a particular uh, clustering key. When you select it, it will distribute the data and it it lower the overall depth of that column. Okay. Now, uh, what all the column metadata clustering? Okay. So whenever we store the data into Snowflake. It stores something into its metadata as well. Okay, what all things it stored? It stored related to the um, the range. What is the range from the values? What all the distinct values? Okay, and also whenever it stores the data, it try to sort the data. If you are loading the data for entire table in a one go, it automatically sort the data and it try to try to maintain the clustering of the particular column. Okay. Now, how we can check this clustering uh, depth in the uh, Snowflake? So these are two variables or the functions uh, Snowflake provide to us. We can use these two functions and we can get the information from it. Okay. Now, how we can monitor the uh, data storage? Okay. How much our Snowflake is containing uh, the data? How we can monitor? And this will also use to determine the overall cost of our Snowflake storage cost okay so the cost of storage divided mainly uh, or, or it contains from the four parts okay the first one is file stage for bulk loading or unloading that will contain the storage second is the snowflake tables including historical data of time travel that is also contains in the snowflake the third part is fail safe okay so the fail safe is also the feature where we can retrieve the tables beyond the time travel date also okay but this fail safe is only for uh, 7 days after the fail safe uh, uh, time travel period okay the last thing is like when you clone the database but whenever you make any changes it will again create the new uh, uh, storage or the micro partitions for that particular change records so these all things overall uh, uh, overall work for the storage cost okay it all incurs the storage cost how you can monitor it there are <clears throat> several views are available where you can monitor the storage cost the database storage usage history storage daily history stage storage usage history table storing met storage matrix and use in currency daily okay so these are the few uh, these metrics and the fail safe period right i was talking about so the fail safe period is only available for the permanent tables it is not available for the transient and temporary tables transient and temporary uh, the the time travel feature is also varies from only 0 to 1 day but for permanent it can have the 90 days of uh, time travel as well okay so the time travel along with fail safe uh, incurred as a storage cost okay so if the table is not required for fail safe we should always create the transient table 
if you are creating any table by default if you are giving the table creation statement it will have the fail safe period of seven days that means your storage will be accommodate for the seven days okay and and you will be charged for that additional seven days of storage cost okay in transient there is a zero fail safe so that is also one uh, uh, mechanism where you can reduce your overall cost for the snowflake always create the table as transient the last is the search optimization services okay so snowflake comes up with this new feature called search optimization service and it supports only a uh, few types of data type it is not available for all the data types so far it is available only for particular uh, data types and also this search optimization can works only for few of the cases okay the first is whenever our query is kind of selective point lookup queries on the table what it mean suppose we have tbs of data and we are just trying to search the data for one particular customer okay or we can consider here business users who need fast response time for critical dashboard with highly selective filters highly selective filters means we are just trying to pinpoint or just trying to do the selective point lookup okay data scientists who are exploring large data volumes and looking for a specific subset of data data applications retrieving a small set of results based on an extensive set of filtering predicates okay so the one thing is clear for search optimization services it works only when you are filtering the data or trying to filter the data for very limited uh, rows that means you are just trying to search for one particular customer for one one city or something like that okay so what it creates uh, it creates additional metadata into met, uh, into the cloud services layer for this search optimization services whenever we enable for any table it stores additional metadata okay and to store that additional metadata it also uses the compute power okay so whenever if you are using the search optimization services you need to pay for the additional storage cost as well as the computation power okay what all the data types it supports it supports integer numeric date time and time stamp where care binary there is two two types of data types are in currently in preview features only so the variant object and array and the geography okay when you can use this search optimization techniques whenever you are trying to uh, filter your records based on one column and you are trying to get only one or two uh, record out of you have 100000 or 200000 dist distinct values okay that time it will you it will uh, give you the optimized result otherwise it is not necessary to use the search optimization for each and every table it will just include the uh, uh, sorry enhance the overall cost only incurred for the overall cost so in today's session we have covered this topic 1.4 outline snowflake storage concepts we have covered this so this makes our domain 1.0 complete where we have discussed all these snowflake cloud data platform features and architecture this is contains around 20 to 25 questions 25% questions in the final certification exam the next we are going to start on the account access and security so thank you for watching keep learning have a happy new year